Hi! So today I wanted to show you how you can make interactable objects in a 3D game in Godot light up whenever you're looking at them. This way you can show your players what they can interact with and what they can't. So to start out with I just have a simple 3D scene here where I can look around, I can move a little, and when I look at a cube like this nothing happens. Now first of all we want some way to recognize if we are looking at this cube. For this we are giving the cube a, let's see, a second collision layer. I'm using the first collision layer for actual collision and the second collision layer here specifically just for objects that are interactable. So objects that the player would be able to click on or use for something. Maybe objects you can pick up, something like that. Alternatively you could just go and use groups for that, whichever you prefer. Anyway. So the camera attached to the player currently is right here. So what we want is a raycast coming out of the camera. So let's enable the raycast so it actually does something and set it to zero and let's say minus five here. So that's our range. This, this end here is how far we can interact with something or how far it's going to be lighting up. You can change this number here to whatever you like. Now normally you would probably put the script and connect the stuff into the player. I'm not gonna do that because the player has a bunch of code in there and it would just get confusing. So to keep things simple here I'll just add a script to the Raycast itself. So what we can do in here is first of all we want to keep track of what we are currently looking at. So let's say var looking at equals null by default and everything else happens in the process function. So first of all let's see, var collider equals get collider. Since we are currently inside of a raycast we can just get whatever the raycast is colliding with. This will be null if there isn't a collision, so that's good to be aware of. Now there's a few situations here we want to take a look at. So first of all we don't care if we are looking at something we were previously looking at already. So if our collider is equal to looking at we just do nothing. So in that case let's just say if collider doesn't equal looking at everything else happens. So what are we going to want to do in this case? First of all let's put right at the end looking at is equal to collider. By the end of whatever happens here looking at up here we'll store whatever we are currently looking at with this collider. So now what is going to happen if we are looking at something new here? So we're looking at a new collider and we want to know that it's targeted. So what we can just do is if collider doesn't equal now and targeted in collider collider.targeted equals true. So what did I do here? First of all we make sure that the collider isn't null. If the collider is null there's not, no variable to set and nothing to do here. Then we check if the collider contains a variable called targeted. I made this up, this is not a variable that is built into Godot. We have to create that later. Now if this variable exists it means we can access it. So we can say collider.targeted equals true. Optimally we should only ever be looking at objects here that have this variable to begin with, but in case there's ever an error with this, yeah I guess you could just put an error message or something in case that targeted is not in there so you know what's happening. Anyway, that's one case. What happens to the old thing? The previous looking at value, we are currently not looking at that anymore, so we might need to tell it that it's not targeted. So if looking at doesn't equal null and targeted in looking at, same thing as before. Then we just tell this one that it's not targeted. Just like that or almost like that. Look, king. There we go. So yeah that's basically the same code, just the new thing we want to tell it that it's targeted if possible, the old thing we want to tell it that it's not targeted. So to be able to do this, let's add a script to our cube. You can just go in here, attach script, it can be called cube, I don't really care. 
and it gets this variable we've been using before, targeted equals false by default. Now we can make this a set get variable. Specifically, I care about the setter here, not the getter. Uh, set targeted, I guess. Just need some name here. Function set targeted uh, value. So what do we actually want to happen if this thing is getting targeted here? First of all, we can say targeted equals value, so that is being saved. It doesn't really matter, but good to have anyway, just in case you want to use it for something later. Now, if it's targeted, we want to say essentially activate interact shader. Just putting a comment here and writing a pass for now because the shader doesn't actually exist yet. Otherwise, deactivate interact shader. So to continue here, we need to create this actual shader first. Let's go into this mesh instance here. This is what gives the cube its shape, and it has a material on it, making it blue. So what we can do is we can go into this material, and we can look at the next pass, because we want it to stay blue, we want it to keep its general color, but we want to apply a shader afterwards. So in the next pass, we can add a shader material, add a new shader. We can save this shader for use later. Let's call it interact.shader, that will do. And now we can write code down here for this shader. So first of all, shader type is spatial because we are working with spatial nodes. And then we want to give it a uniform float strength, I guess. All right, and now it turns white, but we don't care about that just yet. What we need is a fragment shader. This means we can change whatever colors are on this thing. So void fragment, and that's our function. And we can just set the albedo, so the actual color of the thing, to a new vector 3. I'm just going to go with 0 0.88, 1.0, 0, 0.0. That's a kind of yellowish color. Additionally, let's say alpha. Yeah, yeah, currently it's just setting that right there, but we are gonna say alpha equals strength. So that way we can use this uh, strength uniform to turn on and off the shader, because if the strength is zero, the alpha is zero, and the shader effect won't be visible at all. If we make it to a larger value, it will become visible, and that means technically you can set it to different strength, you can make it, you can make some things more yellowish and some things less so. But I'm just gonna use a constant for that since I just want everything to show up like that. So now we created this shader, and the, the shader instance is somewhere in there. So let's use that. var shader equals, um, actually yeah, let's make this an onready var, because the child nodes might not exist yet. Mesh instance is what we want to work with. The mesh instance has a mesh, and the mesh has the actual material on it. So we do dot mesh dot material dot next pass. That's how we get the next pass shader. That's what we want to work with here. That's where we can set the uniform. So here if we want to activate the interact shader, we can now just say shader dot set shader param strength 0 0.2. Same thing here. Shader dot set shader param strength 0 0.0. So 0, 0.0, we're turning it off. 0 0.2, we're turning it on, but just slightly. We don't need the pass anymore. And with that, everything works fine. We can look at it, and it turns slightly yellowish, but keeps its general color. Otherwise, it's still blue. And if we look away, it doesn't have that color anymore. Now, there's one thing to keep aware of. If we set this to the shader here, that applies to every instance that has the same shader on it. So if I copy this cube over, say I move it over here, then let's see what happens. I look at one of them and both of them get highlighted. That's an easy way to fix this. Because what we gotta do is we gotta go into this mesh instance 
And first of all, make this material here unique. Well, this material here. The, the mesh should probably also be unique if you want to be able to reshape it. So let's make that unique. Let's make the material unique. So that means we can now recolor this one without recoloring the other. So let's make this one red. Then let's go into the next pass and the shader material here, kind of invisible, but that also needs to be unique. And lastly, the shader itself also needs to be unique. Now that we go through this chain and make all things unique in order, if I go back in here, the cubes light up separately, just like we had before. If I get too far away, they no longer light up. That's how you can mark objects as interactable in Godot. This will be all for today. Bye.